Hi everyone, in this demo, I'll walk you through how to monitor cloud code activity using OpenTelemetry, export logs and metrics to the Signals Cloud Platform, and then visualize them in a unified dashboard. By the end, you'll see how easy it is to get full visibility into cloud code's behavior with Signals. Let's start by looking at the official cloud code uh, documentation. Over here, you can see a quick start on how to configure the telemetry using environment variables. Essentially, you want to export a cloud code enabled tel telemetry, you want to set the metrics and logs exporter. In this case, it will be OTLP. You want to set the, the protocol. In this case, it's going to be gRPC, as well as the OTLP endpoint. Here's where we'll use our own endpoint, as well as the authentication. So in this case, they're using a bearer token. In our case, it will be a Cygnos ingestion key. And then we can set the export intervals as well. So in this case, it will be 10 seconds and five seconds for the metrics and logs export. And then at the end, you just run Claude like normal and any Claude activity or interactions will be automatically recorded and sent via OpenTelemetry to your Signals Cloud platform or whatever endpoint of your choosing. Now let's go over to our docs where we have a little bit more detail. Essentially, there are two options in which developers will most likely be using Cloud Code. It will be in VS Code or some type of code editor. And this is where most developers will be using Cloud. And then option two is obviously what we just saw, which is in Terminal. So in the option one for VS Code, essentially we're setting the same environment variables. And in the same command, we run code from whatever current directory we're in or whatever directory you want to open VS Code in. Essentially what that will do is open up a VS Code session with all these environment variables already set for the duration of that session so that any type of cloud code activity is automatically going to be recorded and sent to Signals Cloud. So this means if you either open up a terminal in that VS Code instance or just click on the, the cloud code shortcut, you'll be able to automatically just use it regularly and all types of exporting the telemetry will be handled for you. Additionally, here in the endpoint, you will just be setting this to your region. In my case, it's going to be US, but you can choose any region which you're specifically in, as well as you're going to replace this with your Signals ingestion key, in which you generated from your Signals Cloud platform. Additionally, we have, again, just a repeat of what's over here. We have a command, a single command in which you can just copy and paste it, which is going to open up Claude in your current terminal. And it's going to have the same behavior as option one, where any, for this d duration of that session, any Claude code commands or activity is going to be automatically recorded and exported over to Signals Cloud Platform. We additionally have bash scripts in our repo that you can just clone over here. And so instead of actually having to manage this entire pasting this command and then changing this manually, what you can do is clone our repo over here. And you see we have two scripts, one for terminal and one for VS Code. And essentially they're the same thing where it's just an executable script of the same command we just talked about. So you can replace this region and your Signals ingestion key for, in this case, it's the terminal. And if you run this script, it's going to automatically spawn in a Cloud Code uh, session that's automatically recorded via OpenTelemetry and we'll, uh, any, any activity is going to be sent over to Signals Cloud Platform. Additionally, we have our VS Code script. And if you launch this, you're going to see um, a VS Code instance pop up with the appropriate configurations for OpenTelemetry and Signals. Again, as you can see, all you have to do is replace this and this with your region and your Signals ingestion key. And everything else will be handled for you. Great. So that's just a little bit about how to configure Cloud Code for OpenTelemetry and Cygnos. Now, now let me show you a real world example in which I launched this VS Code instance with OpenTelemetry configured for Cloud Code and show you how that works. Now let's hop into a real example. Right now I'm in a current project directory that I have with some code in it, and I'm going to activate or execute the script that I have from our repo that opens up the VS Code terminal. Here's the script. Just to confirm, this is essentially the script that I had taken from our repo. And on my end locally, I've updated the script with the region as well as my signal suggestion key. For security purposes, obviously, I'm not going to be showing you the contents of that file. But just know that I have um, indeed 
updated those contests on my end. And now over here, what I'm going to do is just press enter and it should pop up this VS Code instance. As you can see, there's some code here and it's the same project directory that I was in before. Now I'm going to open up this Cloud Code shortcut and as you can see, Cloud Code is up and running. Any activity that I do from this point on in this window, or even if I typed Cloud in this terminal window and executed it, any Cloud activity will be recorded and exported over to Signal's platform, specifically logs and metrics. So over here, I can type up something like, give me a summary of the structure of this code, code base. As you can see, it gives a nice summary. This is a Langchain plus Cygnos MCP demo project with the following structure, with the back end in Python, front end React, automation scripts, and gives some more details. Te technology stack is for AI, observability, back end, front end, and an MCP server. And the purpose is demonstrating an AI chatbot with comprehensive observability and monitoring, likely for performance testing and tracing AI application behavior through Cygnos. Now let's hop into our Cygnos platform and I can show you the logs and metrics that were generated from this exact prompt. Okay, let's hop into our Cygnos cloud platform and let's go over to the log section. Let's first talk about what logs were sent. As you can see in the last five minutes, we have some logs that were sent from the interaction that I just had just done. There are a couple of important logs in the form of events that we want to keep track of that essentially highlight the entire life cycle uh, of a cloud code request. We'll start by going through the user prompt. This is the entryway of this workflow where it's based on the prompt that the user gives. In my case, it was to summarize the structure of the code base. When we click on that log, we can see some very useful attributes information. We can see the event name. In this case, it was cloud code uh, user prompt. We can see the timestamp. We can see the prompt. In this case, it was redacted for security information. So that's very sometimes very important if you don't want to expose what exact prompts engineers are using. We get the length of the prompt, and we get the session ID. So in what session exactly this prompt was being executed in. We get the terminal type. So in this case, it was executed from VS Code, but we will see something like terminal if it was executed directly from the terminal, or iTerm, or whatever terminal app you're using. We also keep track of the, the account member who was using this, which is very important, and some other useful information like the host architecture, the OS version, and et cetera. Now let's go on to the next important log event, which is the API request. So the API request is from the user prompt, the exact request that's being sent to the cloud code API. And in this log event, we see some additional important information. And this is specifically for the LLM for Cloud. We see the cost of USD of the tokens being used. We see the duration for the entire request in milliseconds. Again, we see the event name, which is API request. We see how much input tokens and output tokens were used by this prompt. And we see what type of model is being used. In this case, it was Cloud Sonnet. We see other important information, like in the previous log, there is some overlap, such as the terminal type, user email, and etc. Now let's go on to the other two important log events, which is tool result and tool decision. Tool result is essentially the result of the tool call. So this is going to include information like if there was a failure encountered during this tool call, and tool decision is overall the users or the developers response to that tool. So in the case where code is generated, will they, did they accept that change or did they reject that change? So in tool result, we can see some important information. We can see the duration again. We can see the timestamp. And over here, we see that success variable. We can see the success. In this case, it was true. And that means no failure was encountered during this tool call. And if in, in the case of a network error or an API related error, you would see false over here. And again, we have some overlapping information as the previous logs. Now, lastly, we have the tool decision. And over here, we can see the decision is set to accept. So in this case, since it was a read-only operation, uh, just summarizing the code, without really any approval needed from the developer, in, my, in this case me, 
it's going to default to accept. But in cases where code is actually changed and Cloud Code proposes, do you want to accept or reject these changes, this will appropriately be evaluated. Also, we can see that the tool name over here is read. So like I said earlier, this tool call was responsible for only reading the information in our code and nothing else. And if it would be changed depending on what the exact tool call was doing. So if I had asked it to actually edit some code, it would be, it would be responding to that accordingly over here. Again, very, overlap, very similar overlapping information to the previous logs. Great. Now that I showed you about the logs, let's hop into the metrics and see what type of metrics are recorded here on Cygnus. Now let's hop over to the metrics section. And let's filter the service name for Cloud Code to get only the Cloud Code related metrics. As you can see here, we have very useful metrics that are exported automatically via our Cloud Code configuration over here. We can see the number of tokens used. We can see the total active time of the session in seconds. We can see the cost of the Cloud Code session overall. And we can see the number of sessions that were spawned overall. And we can see in the cases where code is actually changed, we can see how many lines of code really were changed by Cloud Code. And lastly, over here, we can see overall the user decisions based on these tool calls, whether they accepted or rejected it. Let's hop into one of these metrics and see what, what the view detailed view is here on Cygnos. We can see the metric type. In this case, it's a sum. We can see the description, unit, in this case, tokens, and then the temporality. And here's something that's really interesting. We get kind of a aggregation of a bunch of attributes here. We can see in, the, we can see in this time frame there were 13 total sessions that were created. And you can see and scroll through all the sessions. We can see what versions were used in, in this time frame. We can see the type, output, cache read, input, and cache creation. We can see what models were used. So overall, in this time frame, we saw that Claude, Claude Opus, Sonnet, and Haiku were the ones that were being used. We can see that these two user IDs were using the Cloud Code session or the Cloud Code during this time frame. And they were using it from VS Code as well as the Apple Terminal. And we even get the specific emails of those two users. So in this case, this is me, and this is my CEO. And so it shows that both of us were using this uh, configuration, as well as some other in important information that we saw that was repeated in our logs. And that's just a little bit about the metrics that were exported from our Cloud Code configuration here on Cygnus. And now it's time to hop into the dashboards, where we can easily visualize this. OK, let's hop into the dashboard section where I can show you a sample dashboard that I've created based on these logs and, uh, logs and metrics that really give key insights onto the usage and activity of Cloud Code. So let's go through each of these panels and really see what is going on. Here we have numerical panels for the input, total input and output token usage. This is key in really seeing how much usage token-wise is really be going on by your developers. We can see how many total sessions are there. So in this last week, there were 13 total sessions being used. And within those 13 sessions, there were 19 total conversations. So conversations would be how much back and forth really is going on within each session. As well as we get the total cost of our token usage. So in this case, it was about $2.34 worth of tokens that are being used. I'll get back to this quota usage in a bit, as this is very important. And we have some land charts of the command duration over time of the 95th percentile. So we can see uh, during some time periods, we get peaks or spikes in this command duration. That could either be because their cloud is dealing with huge code bases during this time, or maybe there's network latency or anything of that matter. And in the token usage over time, we have that as a line chart as well. So we can see any spikes in token usage, like over here, we can conclu conclude that maybe developers are using Cloud Code a lot more during this time period right here. Maybe there's a project or a sprint due, and they're really making use of that Cloud Code over here. We have some useful pie charts. We have the success rate of all our total tool calls. So that means whether these tool calls errored out or not. And in this case, we have no errors. So that's why it shows all success over here. 
we see the terminal type. So over here, we have a majority of our cloud code usage being done from VS Code, but there is some small amount being done from the Apple terminal. We also get the model distribution. So we see that it's almost equal. We have some in Haiku, some in Sonnet, and some in Opus, as well as a pie chart of the user decisions distribution. So essentially, based on all the tool calls done to Cloud Code, how many were accepted versus how many were rejected by the developer. And this could give us a good idea on really how the developers are viewing Cloud Code in its responses. And if we see a um, higher number of acceptance, like what we see now, Cloud Code is really giving good values or good responses or, and good code suggestions versus in terms of if there were higher amounts of rejections, we'd conclude that you know maybe Cloud Code isn't helping as much as we want it to right now. Lastly, we have a tool type pie chart. And as you can see here, it distributes all the different types of tools that were called. And we can see here that the majority of the tool calls were actually read tool calls. But we see some of them were bash tool calls. Some of them were grep, which is searching tool calls. And then we have a small amount of write tool calls as well, as well as ls. And then over here, something that's really important is we keep track of the users and number of requests per users. So we see here that I had a total of 11 requests done. And then we see Pernay over here had eight requests done. And we can essentially track the usage of all your users in your organization or in your team that are using Cloud Code. Now, lastly, let's go over to our quota usage in the last five hours. So Cloud Code operates on a five hour rolling limit. And essentially every five hours, you are limited to the amount of messages you can send to Cloud Code, depending on your account type over here. So assuming I'm in the max 5x account type, you can see that in the last five hours, I've used 1.6% of the Dakota usage. This is really important because Cloud Code doesn't give clear rules or clear notifications on when your usage is running up. They tend to just give a warning sign when you're close to using your usage, and this can be kind of confusing from a developer perspective. So here you really just get a good ballpark of where you really are in terms of your quota usage. So let's go on to, let's say I'm in the pro account. You can see that, oh wow, I'm 8% there in the last five hours versus if I'm in the max 20X account subscription plan, you can see it's only 0.4% uh, of the way there. Obviously the closer you are to 100, you're, you're closer and closer and closer to hitting your five hour limit. And that's it. We just set up Cloud Code's open telemetry monitoring, exported telemetry to Signals Cloud, and explored the logs, metrics, and a unified dashboard here on Signals Cloud. This workflow gives developers deep visibility into how Cloud Code is behaving in real time. So thanks for watching, and be sure to try it out with your own workloads. Bye, and have a great day.